Hello, my name is Iran, and welcome to Up to Four Players and a DM. I am a DM, and my name is Iran. Um, this is a mini marathon, and you are probably not seeing me right now until our technical dwarf, Aviv Manoach, from behind the scenes, whom you will not see throughout this entire mini marathon, uh, will tell us that you can see us. No, not yet? Okay, then you can just hear my sweet voice instead um we are from the webcomic up to four players dot com and we have gathered because we really like playing D&D we really like doing projects like a marathon in which we play D&D for um, a long long time and we really like to dedicate um these sorts of projects to charities and gain all the monies uh, there's a thing that we really like to do in which you can donate to either the heroes or uh, the monsters which we have found really entices people to give money and so we're hoping to pass five hundred dollars in donations for extra life um i, I always um, miss miss say it i say it mistakenly the specific the miracle network hospital or hospital miracle network of hospitals for um, that take care of injured and sick children. Uh, all of this money is under the uh, the banner of the um, tabletop appreciation weekend of um, Extra Life. This is an entire weekend throughout which you can watch not only us but other people doing the same kind of marathons. Most of them are longer than ours because we're only doing six hours, and. Uh, we are under the um, the specific banner of the D&D group, team, sorry. All of our money is also counter, counted for the D&D team because we are playing D&D and we thought it would be awesome. We're playing D&D 5 and if you never played role-playing games before, that's fine. Uh, if you've never played D&D 5 before, that's fine as well. We'll be explaining things as we go along as needed. Some of our players are new to this as well. Um, I'm not. And I'm not a player. I'll be the DM, actually. So I'll be running the adventures. From behind the scenes, if you want to, you can chat with us on the twitch.tv slash up to four players with the four is the actual number four. And also, as I said before, influence the game with your donations. All the links are there, so you can just check that. That's enough with me. Um, let's talk a bit about our players. Aviv, do we have cameras yet? Oh, that's, that's, that's unfortunate. Then I won't be talking about the players then because I want you to actually see them as I talk about them. Instead, um, what are we going to play? Um, we'll start with Secrets of Sokol Keep, which is an adventure, a very nice adventure, from one of the previous seasons of the Adventures League. We will continue to... Um, how is it called? I'll, I'll check... Shadow over Moonsea, which is another. Oh, and here we are. Hello. Oh, hello. Hello. Yes. And then we'll finish out with um, Amber's Wood Forest. We'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Um, as you'll see along. I don't want to spoil anything anyway. Um, let's let's go over our players now that you can see them. Uri, please say hello. Yeah. Hello. My name is Uri. Delighted to be here. You might notice that my accent is pretty horrible, but that's fine. Because we, have, we can do nothing about it. Um, several of our players as well today will be Israeli like me, with uh, accents varying from horrible to very horrible. And I apologize in advance. If anything is unclear, just ask me and I will say it again. Um, Uri, can you please present yourself a bit? And before we get to your character, just yourself. Who are you and why you, what is your special place here with our game tonight? Well, hello. I will be... One of today's players, I will be a consecutive player throughout our marathon. My name is Uri Lifshitz. I'm an improviser, a technology entrepreneur, and on my spare time, I co-host a role-playing podcast with Iran about the glorious, glorious hobby of role-playing games. Um, as I said before, you will be with us throughout the entire day, but... There are three other players that have um, volunteered their time, their effort, and their um, uh, D&D ability for these two hours. And they are, by no particular order, uh, Johnny. Say hello. Johnny? We can't hear you. You're, you're muted. 
I don't know why I can't unmute from. Never mind. Hi, I'm Johnny. Um, I've been role playing for uh, I think about 18 years now, um, which is a long while. Uh, I'm both a player and a DM. My spare time, uh, I have a baby that you might hear in the background, and I work in a computer uh, company, and uh, that's it. Excellent. Um, uh, Lucas, hello. What's up? Hello. Uh, I'm Lucas. I uh, am from Kansas City, Missouri, United States. Uh, I also work for an IT company here ah. and uh, have only recently switched to role playing games as I spent much of my early gaming uh, in the competitive scene. So, role play is a nice change of pace for me. Excellent. And uh, Ophir, hello. Hello. I'm one of the horrible accent people. Uh, I'm from Israel. And uh, I'm, uh, I graduated high school like three months ago. And well, congratulations for you. Thank you. And thought that maybe playing will uh, help me bend some time. Um, so we will uh, play. How, how about we do that? Um, Aviv, can, sorry, um, Aviv in the background, can you hear me? Yeah, um, we are talking to you in the chat, in the Hangout. There are some technical problems, if you can please check it. <laughs> you, you sigh. Okay. Um, let's start with showing off our characters. Um, as you may already see, here are all the characters that will be joining us today with a pizza in the center. Um, <laughs> Which is, I think, the best panel we ever did in our comics. Let's start with this group of likely, very likely, heroes. Please, just a, a sentence or two. Uri, who are you and what is going on? Well, hello. My name is Count Lepon. First name, Count Lepon. And I, <clears throat> and I am... A very, very wealthy merchant. However, my inspiration is to become more than a merchant, is to be a nobleman, is to be someone who will marry a very specific princess who currently is in Waterdeep. And I shall join these great people, and these great, great people shall join me. And together, we shall make a heroic character out of me that no princess no princess in the world of Aaron will be able to refuse. So just to make clear, your name is Count the Pawn, but that is yes. actually your name. You're not a Count. My parents wished to be a nobleman, so they named me Count. That's not how it works, but okay. We will go with that. Sure, of course. Why not? Um, Johnny, who are you, this blue guy person dude here? I am Diroleus. I am the uh, I'm a scholar of uh, secrets related to things. You might have read my uh, series of novels. I mean tomes um, detailing secrets of things in the universe. Oh, so you're uh, you're that kind of uh, academic, the one that never graduates and always just munches on the uh, uh, money from the university and stuff like that. I'll have you know that I have a PhD. In something. Of course. Of course, yes. Yes, you're generally good with the thing of something. Uh, sure thing. Um, Lucas, who are you <coughs> and who is this person? Uh, hey, y'all. I'm Adrian. Uh, I grew up on the streets. Uh, streets taught me how to forge, how to steal, how to hide, how to run. Uh one night I was running and I fell and uh, the Dark Maiden, she saved me and I've, I've taken up her cause ever since. Dark Maiden sounds kind of dark. Do you like kill people? Uh, uh, no, quite the opposite. The Dark Maiden is the silver moon that graces us who roam during the night. Uh, she danced before me and I've taken up her message to spread peace uh, and fight for the peace that all people deserve. Excellent. Uh, Ophir, who are you, this person with the divine power? 
I'm Rocco the Paladin, and uh, in my youth days, I found a divine tome that led me, when I researched it, it led me to, an, uh, to a life of uh, hermitage in the forest. And uh, since then, I was uh, researching my, uh, my divine powers that I got through the skull. Do you keep the skull with you? The skull is always on me, in a, <laughs> on my body. Okay, excellent. Um, we are basically ready to go then. But I understand there are some technical problems that might be the fault of Twitch or might be the fault of us. Just to make sure, we will now stop our um, side of the uh, streaming. We will return in a few moments uh, after we try to fix things on our end. And if that doesn't work, well, praise Saloon. <laughs> Okay. Hello. We are Hello. live again. And hopefully... Are we? Um, we are going to try and start playing now that all of the buffering thing just stopped. We've actually been waiting, like you guys, for the past 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes, until the buffering just stops. But now it's stopped. So now we can do whatever we like. Like, play D&D for charity! I remind you, because this is basically what we do. For every $30 that the monsters get, you just need to say monsters when you donate. That's it. There's a description then. The monsters get stronger. For every $30 you donate to the heroes, the heroes get inspiration, which is very useful and allows them to re-roll. Not, not exactly re-roll, but get an advantage. It's a great thing. For every $90 accumulated for the heroes, one of them will get a flashback, which is kind of awesome. And when it happens, you'll see. Um, currently, thanks to Johnny, who is one of our players, the monsters got an upgrade because we already have $30 from them. We already have $150 even from before because um, that's what we as up to four players already um, donated uh, as part of our uh, um, um, Patreon, we just gave all of Patreon for this month, but that doesn't count for anyone. Only donations from now on will count, and the one that Johnny just did while we were offline. So, let us begin. Uh, I hope you've, you've uh, got a, a, a chance to uh, get a glimpse of our characters and understand who is who. If not, that's fine. We will be playing, and you will see them as we play. <sighs> now, um, just to make sure, Aviv, technical dwarf. What, sorry? Sure. Are we online? Chat, can you see us? Yell at us, chat. Yell at us. Yell at us. Oh. Okay, you write something in the chat because we can't actually hear you. <laughs> mm. oh. oh, okay. Okay, seems like we're on. Then we'll go on. Well, this is the Moon Sea, a region of Faerun so um, raw and uh, frontier-like that its many city-states are in an eternal state of war and distrust between them. We are in the city of Flan, named after a desert, right here <laughs> at the top left of the Moon Sea, um, a place uh, kind of um, out of the way even for the Moon Sea area. Uh, not as big and interesting as Elmwood, not as dangerous and uh, profitable and, and, and industrious as Mulmaster. Flan is a small city uh, with the, its own small problems. And currently, with one small wannabe noble standing on the docks, and uh, hoping to make a name for himself. In Mulmastar, not in Flan. Because Mulmastar is the big city. Mulmastar is where the Zora is waiting for him. For <laughs> a very lucrative offer. However, for the past two days, there are um, maybe even three. The lighthouse of, um, the, of, of Sokol Keep, the tiny little island, Thorn Island, on the um, just off the shores of uh, Flan, um, has stopped working, and with no lighthouse, no ships can come and go 
from the Flan Harbor. This is a problem for our hero Count de Pun, de Pun or de Pan? De Pan. De Pan. Uh, because he is trying to charter a ship to Mulmastar on the other side of the sea, as you can see from the map, because you have eyes and I'm, I'm understand that you see. Um, it is a dark and stormy day. Generally speaking, this is how things are around Flan this time of the year. It is um, raining lightly and grayish in the sky. The waves are kind of high and the um, Sokol Keep on Thorn Island seems like, like a jutting finger from the sea. Before we get be better and deeper into it, I should tell you, Count, basically, the, um, uh, the enforcers of Flan City are called the... Oh my god, it was just before me. The peasants? No. <laughs> the ones who stand before me? The pebbles? Nice. Uh, the wee... Yes. Weeds. Go on. No, the black fist. The black oh. fist, <laughs> yes. The Black Fist are pretty powerful, uh, basically mercenary force, but uh, sort of the city police. And they are not going to investigate the case as far as you know. In fact, you've been sitting in your laughing goblin tavern for the past two days waiting for this to resolve itself. But it clearly isn't. You will have to stand up and do something with the help of these three, who in a moment you're going to tell me how it came to be that they are going to help you in this. Now, before that, I have a question. Who will you approach to ask for permission to get to Sokol Keep, which is technically part, well, belongs to House Sokol? Will you ask, well, House Sokol Administrative Office, or will you turn to the Black Fist Guard Post? Because, you know, it is, since it is part of the city's security sort of the 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 lighthouse is supposed to always be um operating just um, just to get this straight you're asking me if i would like to speak with peasants or with nobles no yeah i, you, I shall speak with house Sokol. yes no uh, well well the black uh, the house Sokol administrative office um, uh, is of course um, uh, meant by uh, Liela, who is an employee of the house and not part of the house. But she gl she, she is very glad to uh, see you. The, um, um, it's, it's generally speaking, it's a pretty easy day with basically no cargo coming off and off from uh, from the um, uh, docks. Um, but before you approach her, please tell me. How come this party of adventurers is with you? Well, it is easy. Ro Rocco, the great paladin, is someone who is not afraid of a challenge. And the minute he heard that there is a problem with the lighthouse, well, he couldn't help himself but to help me. To right the wrong that this world is trying to impose on my journey to greatness. <laughs> and I appreciate him for that. He has shown himself to be more than a peasant. The young Adrian, I see as a protege, some sort of a younger, someone who can grow into something maybe half my lustrous glory, maybe even two thirds, for I see greatness in the boy. And as for Derlos, he is simply too exotic to ignore my call to arms. I like surrounding myself with those who are exotic and exceptional. I will go in further. Um, let's go again by order of my choosing. Uh, Dirolios, please roll history. How you do that? Basically, as I said while we were offline, there is a little button, button a macro that I've made that allows you to just roll to the 20s. Um, or you can do, as always and with every time you use roll 20, Slash R in the chat, slash R space D20. And that will roll a D20. That was a D20 that you rolled. And it was 14. Your history is on your skill list under intelligence. 
Do you have anything in history at all? Under my skills, under intelligence, let's see. Well, of course I would know history. Maybe I wouldn't uh, go as far as putting a skill in it. But yes, apparently I have four ranks in history. It isn't actually ranks, but that's a... Uh, um... That, that's that's a D&D 3 sort of thing. Um, plus 4, so that's 18 all in all. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that this actually is quite... Um, quite an opportunity. Because as you've heard, there is supposed to be a treasure of some unknown origin under Sokol Keep uh, in Thorn Island. Sokol Keep is built on top of a previous building, a temple or something, you don't know, remember the details. But it was something that was built here 200 years ago, before the dragon run, before the dragons came and basically destroyed most of the Moon Sea area. And when it was rebuilt, it is said there is a great treasure, very useful for, you know, whatever kind of thing you want under the keep. So that's for you. Of um, course, it's useful that uh, the Count has uh, assembled the group to protect me while I explore these secrets. That, that's actually very, very nice of him. Um, Adrian, can you please roll... You know what? History as well. Okay. That's a six. Minus one. I like it, yes. Um, they're not very... Well... <clears throat> no, no, knowledgeable. Uh, Adrian still knows a little bit, and uh, that's about Egan. Egan Sokol is probably one of the more down-to-earth nobles of Flan. Flan is not a big city, but its nobles are very well. They really like being nobles. They really like their status, and they don't really. You don't really see them in the streets as such. You see them in the walled city, the um, western side of Flan, where people like you are usually not welcomed, uh, and you'll have to sneak inside and stuff like that. Egan was one. I say was because no one's seen him for like probably half a year at least, if not more. Um, was one of the more um, reachable noble people that you know of. He's not, he's, he can't be much older than you, you think, and you could see him browsing, uh, walking around the small stores of um, newer Flan, the, the eastern side of the city, um, always in the lookout for all sorts of curious, <clears throat> well, things that only he knew about, all of those things that he said or something, how to say. Um, the, one, the, the one last time you've heard something about Egan was on his disappearance to Sokol Keep. As far as you know, he never returned from there. Now, it's not very that far away, as you might see on the map. I mean, Thorn Island is basically just a few hundred meters off the shore of Flan. But getting to Sokol Keep and from Sokol Keep, apparently, is not that easy. And no one has seen Egan for quite some time. The lovely Egan, I should say. Mm -mm. <clears throat> well, how nice of the Count to give me a chance to break into this tower. Well, uh, it's not the Count, just Count. It is my first name, after all. Uh, <laughs> and my parents really, are very... I don't really understand the difference, but whatever you say. <laughs> <laughs> um, and finally, Rocco, I can tell you that something is wrong in Thorn Island. You felt it ever since you got to Flan, not that long ago. Something is wrong there. And it's the kind of wrongness that would make you kind of shiver sometimes when you turn to look at the keep. This is a chance to go and try to find out what is going on there. Oh, I'm always, I'm always looking to find some answers to my uh, divine questions. Um, excellent. Then, the count... Um, uh, speaking with Leila, is there anything specific you'd like to know before she um, gives you this piece of paper, signs it, and say, take it to the ferryman? Well, of course. My very first question would be, 
Has she heard of me? No. No. Well, then I tell her about me so she could in the future answer yes. this question more correctly. I try to persuade her to give me all sort of information that might lead me and my merry men in a more safer route to the island. Can I persuade her to give, give me any more information than just the uh, transit papers? Well, are you saying you would like to roll a persuasion check? Well, actually I would. Oh, That's well, a 16. Uh, Dirolius, I see you've rolled something before. What was that? Yeah, that was a mistake. Okay, sure, okay. Um, a 19 is never a mistake. 90, yes, exactly. <laughs> Uh, 16, whoa, okay. Um, Leila is quite wowed by your stories of yourself. She don't usually get to actually speak with people of such future renown, apparently, because <laughs> currently you don't actually have anything. Um, well, she tell you about Egan Sokol. She knows him as a, a young scion of the house, but mostly she calls him a scholar. And she knows also there are caretakers in the employ of House Sokol that take care of the keep for the past 40 years or so, ever since it was rebuilt. Um, Darvag and Chandra, she think. She doesn't really know much about them. They've never actually lived the place. Um, there is also, of course, the contingent of Black Fist Guards. Six of them, she thinks. But... Usually only five come and go. She don't remember the details. She don't. There, there's something. They have. Um, they have a sort of arrangement. She's not sure about the things. You know. Um, that's basically it. Well, that's all we need. Thank you, most gracious mistress. <laughs> that's how she says thank you. So, uh, she's Nilfgaardian. Um, okay. She's from Nilfgaard. Huh. Is there anything you would like to do before the ferryman takes you to Circle Keep? Good friends, is there anything we need to purchase, procure, before going on this grand and glorious adventure of our story? Of about 300 meters that way. <laughs> yep. Okay. A doctor That's what is I said. ready. I need nothing. Mm -hmm. Adrian? Oh, everything, I, everything I need, I've, I've got tucked away here and kind of pants his multiple pockets. Uh, you will go far in life, Adrian, I can tell. Being prepared is half the battle. Or two-thirds, I, I can never remember. Or 90%? But well, it's 45 plus 12 plus... <laughs> yes, nice. Uh, Onward! 88.753%. Nice, and you are right, because <laughs> you rolled a 19 before, so I will use that one. <laughs> um, off to Sokol Keep. It is <clears throat> gloomy. Hmm. Now, Aviv Manoach, our technical dwarf, I am starting a music in the background. Tell me. No, so check it now. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Check, check, check. check it now. Oh. I hear it. Nice, and thank you, Tabletop Audio, for your joint operation with Roll20 that allowed me to simply drag and drop your music to the jukebox. I don't hear it. Sokol Keep. It is a big structure, but not menacing, almost comforting. Most of the island is the keep, which looks more like a manor and less like a fortress. The... Um, the windows are big and um, not like arrow slits. The two towers look like they should be used for... Um, um, they're probably used for um, guest houses or stuff like that, not for siege equipment or whatever. And the lighthouse, very the, the biggest part, the highest, tallest part of the keep, is, uh, as before, dormant for some reason. As you approach the uh, clearing, the landing, actually, uh, the ferryman who, who keeps silence throughout the whole um, um, journey just mm. uh, let you drop off 
gently, without saying a word demanding anything or saying when he'll return. But there are already three people, cloaked, waiting on the shore. It is raining, not heavily, but somewhat raining. And the wind is kind of fierce out here, outside of the city. And yet they are here, standing outside of the keep, waiting obviously for you. Where are they? Could you pinpoint them on the map? Basically here. Bling! Rocco, good man! Why don't you take point? <laughs> Being the heavily armed fellow among us. Now, of course. There's no need for arms. You can keep your arms in your sheets. So, we shall approach them. Um, they have to kind of... Well, no, actually, no, that, that, it's not, it's not that, uh, that uh, windy. You don't actually have to shout at them. Uh, it's very clear as you approach that under the rattled, the, the, the rattled uh, um, tattered clothes, um, uh, there's an old man, an old woman, and um, someone who's uh, somewhat older than Adrian, although it's hard to tell by how much. All of them, the moment they see you guys, and especially you, Count, lower their eyes in sort of the way that one would do before he's better. As they should. <clears throat> Tell me, good sirs and madam, what, what perchance happened to this lighthouse? I don't know, it, it just stopped walking. We were hoping for someone to come from the mainland and check it. Ah, well, come we have. Let us proceed. Plus, I am certain you and your skill could solve this matter peacefully and quietly. I'm looking up at the tower. Hmm. Has anyone um, tried going up? No, no, we, we never approach it. We don't understand it. Is it uh, magical in nature? They look at each other. Um, uh, we think, maybe. Wait, you want to tell me that no one is actually operating the tower? Well, there was this young uh, so-called man here. He was... Such a nice person, so noble. Um, I think uh, he was uh, tending to it. None of us ever do. It's it's not our place. Well, if peasants I have to discover how to, by peasants. if my task is to discover how the tower works and make it work, then so be it. Let us advance. You basically push ba uh, past them. So if they're on the path, I push past them. They shouldn't be on the path. The path is for using, and they are not using it. Nice. Um, the younger one, the uh, youngest of them, takes a step forward and places a hand on your arm like this. Excuse me, but uh, who are you, fellows, if you can? And do you have the permission of House Call to be here? I am just shocked. I am just shocked. Adrian, can you explain to these people that we should pass? Yeah. First of all, I don't think you should touch the count. He doesn't much like people like us. Uh, we've been sent here by, I don't know, somebody that works for somebody that knows somebody, uh, and we're supposed <laughs> to fix this thing. <laughs> But uh, somebody that no wait, I know a Mr. Somebody. Is that the one you're referring to? Um, uh, Ellen, please roll persuasion. Uh, that felt more like intimidation to me. I don't know. Uh, is your intimidation <laughs> better than plus five? Uh, no, I don't no. intimidate anybody. That's fine. Oh, but nice. eight is more than, is enough to persuade him. <laughs> he looks a bit, you know, there, there's, there's a glint in his eyes of kind of, well, I will keep an eye on you guys, but he nods. He understands from what you said that 
something apparently is going on and none of these three look like they are able to stand up to themselves in any way for anything for the life of them. They take a step back and you can peacefully enter the manor and do whatever you like. And the three of them are right behind you. Hmm. Fine, if the peasants need something to follow, they can follow something as glorious as us. Even taking one step inside the ground make you shiver a bit. Uh, it's probably the cold. It can be anything else. But maybe it's also how empty this place looks. So unlived in. Just one glance and it looks too big and too empty. What do you do? Well, we're not in time. We're heading to the lighthouse and we're fixing it. And then we go off and catch the boat to Moolmaster. Of course. Everyone with you? Of course. Well, of course, we should make a little detour to the ruins before we do. We go off, but fixing the lighthouse sounds like a good idea. Mm-hmm. Okay, Advanced okay. we are. The lighthouse in the other side of the court. As you pass it, you can see that there are some um, training dummies that someone has set up in the court with some um, boxes and various implements used for the, um, um, to take care of, of um, arms and armor and stuff like that. Uh, you can't, however, see any of the Black Fist themselves that are supposed to be stationed here. You approach the lighthouse, which is built as a part of the manor, and you try to open the door. It doesn't open. It takes about a second for um, the man, the, the older man that is still walking behind you, to take a step forward and say, Oh, excuse me. Yes, um, the keys. Here they are, um, sir. He says, and give it to the Helios in your hand. It's like a big set of a lot of keys. This should open any door in the manor. Oh, thank you, Mika. Kind, sir. Yes. I approach the door and I uh. pick a key. Any key. It doesn't take a lot of time to <laughs> pick one. It opens up very easily. The, the floor creaks as you take a step inside. It's kind of big. I mean, it. the, it, the steps that, of course, um, um, how do you say when they go like this? Spiral? Yes, spiral. Yeah. When wind. they spiral wind, both of these are fine. Um, they are, everything looks a bit big. I mean, the, the distance between the stairs is a bit too too far for your legs. The, the, um, the corridor itself is a bit too wide for what you're used, at least from Flan, where everything is kind of, you know. Um, but are getting you calling up... me short? What, sorry? Are you calling me short? Well, basically, yes. Um, <laughs> but getting up to Lighthouse is very easy. It's tall. Consisted of several floors, but it seems like most of the floors... Um, well, I, they are interesting, so I will stop for a moment to talk about them. The first floor is quite obviously a barracks used by hmm. some about three people. And uh, no one is here. Uh, no one is where they're supposed to be. Oh. The second floor looks again like a barracks, again for three people, and no one is here. Finally, the third floor is the beacon itself. The door is again locked with a different key this time, opening it pretty easy. And as you open it, it's like you have to push against the door because of the wind. Now, it's not the, 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 the beacon itself is inside the closed uh, area. And uh, the enclosed area isn't that windy. Outside, however, the wind is almost storm level with how, how, how hard it pushes against you. You take a look hmm. at the contraption, a brass beacon in the middle of the pretty tiny room. It's kind of strange and it is obviously supposed to be magical in nature. There's no place to put oil or light something, nothing like that. Mm -hmm. I well, roll the Olius? I roll Come on, Norwich Arcana. 
Please roll Arcana then. Uh, ha! The monsters just gain um, a donation of fifteen dollars. Thank you. Great guys, um, thank you. Uh, they're the halfway to the next. I mean, the, the first time you're going to encounter monsters, you're basically going to get butchered. Um, so <laughs> un unless you get, a, I don't know, a lot of insight that will be very helpful. Uh, 22 is more than enough to understand that the the um, the beacon is indeed, of course, magical, but it there's nothing wrong with it. It's supposed to work. I mean, you look at it, you check it, you test it. Everything is okay everything is fine it's well, it is well maintained everything works except that it doesn't work well the beacon is actually you explain this the beacon is actually working we just can't see it obviously a, a window opens the moment you say that dirolius your knowledge skill is like a broken pencil <laughs> pointless <sighs> How can we make it work? And why is the window open? It's freaking cold in here. Why did the window open? No apparent reason. Oh. I go and try to cl close the window. You it's close it. Here. You close it easily. No problem at all. Well, oh. I'm trying to turn it on and off again. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way to turn it on and off. It's not... And the device is supposed to be always on, always magically projecting light. It never stops, except that it doesn't work. Okay, well, I I'm kick it. Fine. Nothing happens. Okay, that's all my knowledge. <laughs> well, I'm afraid that uh, I've reached a dead end. Uh, where is that Sokol fellow who is maintaining this? Where is he? Iran are the three mysteriously suspicious and <laughs> backstabbing no, no, none of them, none of them. <laughs> characters. <laughs> They're obviously backstabbing. No, no, none of them entered the lighthouse. Okay, then I see no point but to find this Sokol fellow and tell him to make the light visible, obviously. So, which one of you three will be able to track this m mysterious caller who is somewhere here, probably in his room? You can just go to his room. You actually have keys to everywhere, so it's not that much of a problem. Hmm. My questions stand. Adrian, Derilus, Rocco, which one of you can lead us to Mr. Sokol room? Uh, I could probably find the room, but I'm not used to people just handing us keys and letting us in wherever we please. <laughs> It kind of feels, you know what, uh, Adrian, as if this whole place is yours, in a way. Nothing is going to stop you from just running on the wolves or whatever you want over here. And take whatever you want, by the way. See, the role is, Rocco, this is initiative. Adrian, lead on, my good boy. Uh, sure. Um, I'd like to look around. Is there anything on this top floor that looks like... I could slide down the stairs. Um, yeah, sure. Why not? You can slide down the stairs. Um, there's, you know what? You look around. There's this big, um, not exactly block, a sheet of like hardwood against the wall. And as you look at it, it kind of trembles, probably from the wind, and like kind of of, of slides toward the floor. Uh, yeah. Check it out, guys. Let's let's get to the bottom here as quick as we can. This wind up here is a little freaky. Uh, and then I'll try to use this wood and uh, position myself as a surfer to try to surf down the spiral staircase. No problem oh. at all. You just whee all the way down to the bottom. Um, as you get out, you obviously frighten the younger man who was standing outside, not exactly trying to eavesdrop, but basically trying to eavesdrop. Uh, he jumps to the side as you just slide next to him into the mud uh, and again into the wind and, and yucky rain. Um, and, and he jumps to the side and says, Sir? Yes. Hello. Hello. Yes. 
Have you ever uh, discovered what's wrong with the beacon? Uh, I don't know. There's some something up there that's supposed to light and hasn't lit. But did you know this? This slide's pretty amazing here. Have you tried this? And he kind of <laughs> offers him the wood. He looks um, worried. Um, I don't. We don't usually enter that. That's where the black fist are. I don't. We don't. We don't have permission. I don't. I better not touch it. Permission, man. You had the keys the whole time. Yes, but but there was. Um, mm, he, he he basically shuts up and try to quite embarrassed try to push himself away from you gently are toward the, the basic manor. Where are the black fist? I I don't know. Where is Mr. Sokol then? I don't know. Oh my god, I am growing agent here. Where is everyone? Someone. We d- we don't we don't know. Oh, for all the gods sake, man. What do you mean you don't know? Mr. Sokol is here. Where is he? Lead the way. Show us his rooms. He turns around and basically tries to run away from you. I mean, he, he, not really run away, but I, I'm sorry, I, I have things to attend to. And, and he looks, I, I'm not exactly ashamed, but obviously terrified of you guys. Turns away and just try to, to walk away. Oh my God, why is everyone on this island in the sample t- Where should we <sighs> stop him? No, we just need to find Mr. Sokol. This this whole thing is just a pit stop. We need to move on. Sokol, well, how do you want... Is, if everything is empty, let's just go look around. Indeed. Probably the most, probably the most luxury room will be the, the one for Mr. Sokol. Okay. Let us so. away. Then you enter the mainland. Yes. Of course. Okay, in search, in search of his, uh, of what is probably Egan's quarters. Mm-hmm. Well, the menu itself is, again, empty and dark. Most of the um, windows are, um, what, most of the um, um, curtains are, are wide open and some light comes from outside. But as you travel from the lower rooms to the second floor, things get a lot darker. And it's obvious that no one actually uses a big part of the house. I mean, most of it, as you like open and pick into open doors and pick into rooms, most of it is is almost half of it, obviously, is covered with sheets or uh, not regularly dusted and not all that well maintained. The other half is, uh, it seems like the the, the three um, stewards are keeping the place generally in a good repair. Um, The two wings, especially, are obviously blocked off. That is, the eastern tower and the (coughs) western tower are both locked and closed the second the second um um floor when you are where the place where you're looking for egan's quarter is um quite surprisingly his suite is not the master bedroom but a smaller place next to it Uh uh-huh it's a simple um looking We've just lost Johnny, I think. Um, it's a simple-looking, um, um, like like Study? set of a, not exactly like a set of two or three rooms together that are that, that basically they look great. I mean, the place looked well kept. Uh, it's open and the windows are open and there are fresh uh, flowers on the um, table. And however. Despite all of it, it's very much um, in disarray. A quick glance oh. showed that the three rooms, uh, comprised of a bedroom, a sitting area, and a small office, um, although have been, been cleaned recently with the walls and floors, richly decorated with carpets and paintings and tapestries and with very heroic scenes, and um, um, all of them are um, obviously somewhat um, um, precious of, of hmm. value. The room itself is untidy, uh, well tended to, but I mean, piles of clothes, 
in next to one of the benches and a mess of books next to um one of the tables well i skim over the books and i look around to find if anything here of is of value in the sense that he tells us where mr suckle is how well I... this this is this is very up in there what do you mean something of value that tells you do you you search around the books i search for or a ledger of some kind, or some sort of a, uh, an itinerary that might tell me where okay. Mr. Suckle is at the moment. The desk looks like the best place to search for it, no problem. Hey, Rocco, what do you do? I want to check the bookcase for all the books, because uh, of course I came here to help uh, the count or uh, the pun, but uh, I'm also here uh, looking for answers to my own questions. L- uh, even a curious look. Um, like like uh, the, the 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 quickest of observation uh, as you skim the bookcase, you can see there are a lot of books about religion. Uh, in a moment, we'll continue with you. Um, Adrian, what are you doing? Uh, I should note there's a very rich looking, I mean, soft sofa, as well. I guess I wouldn't be too concerned with anything specific. Um, I'm more interested in just uh, how this guy was living. Uh, I guess if I can gain any insight onto his uh, last couple days that he spent here. Nice. And finally, Johnny, welcome back. Um, Direlius is, uh, haven't heard what we've just said for the past five minutes. So I'll start with everyone else and then we'll go back to you. Um, Count de Pune. The papers on the, the desk. Pun. The pun. Sorry. Yes, of course. Uh, the papers on the desk have various sketches on them, random musings, observations, and ready shoddy attempts at poetry. The sketches. Oh. The sketches are mostly of the keep and the people, uh, but beyond that, the three drawers of the desk are all locked, and I can tell you, none of the keys fit them. Oh. So you're saying basically bad poetry, roses are red, violets are blue, and no clues in here for you. Fine. (laughs) Okay. Um, Rocco, the bookcase, many scrolls, wide variety of subjects, heroic stories, dusty histories of the Moonsea region mostly, but a lot of theological debates. Uh, Most of them are dry and not interesting and outdated in many ways. Please roll investigation. Uh, it's okay. under your intelligence. Yes, yes. I don't have any bonus for that. It's fine. And that's a six. Uh, no, it had too many books to... You, it just takes too much time. You think that maybe if you like sit here for a day or so, you can probably raffle through them and find something of interest. But on on the surface, it doesn't look like... Well, it doesn't look useful or interesting in any way. <clears throat> Um, Adrian, please roll religion, intelligence religion. Hmm. Nice. 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 I can tell you that just from a casual look, you won't, well, the the carpets, the paintings, they're all very um, richly made and they have an ongoing motif that you recognize after a few moments of looking at them. Uh, There's like a female knight in shining armor against a red dragon in a burning village, or a priest bathing in the lights, uh, keeping a group of undead at bay. Um, All of the things are a bit idyllic in nature. The side of good always appears to be winning. And uh, you understand that this is not just uh, a mere coincidence. These are all scenes from famous stories about Tyr, the god of justice. An interesting thing to say about Tyr is no one is actually worshipping him for the past 80, 100 years or so. I mean, the past few generations, Tyr is no longer being worshipped because he was supposedly died in what is called the Sundering and world, an apocalyptic sort of event that happened about 100 years ago. And, but it seems that Egan really liked Tyr worship. Mm. Uh, would this? What I know would, is this worship sacrilegious, or is it just unhonored? not at all? Tyr is the god of justice, and in a way, retribution. He seeks to get to to make sure that those that are worthy 
get their just reward, and those that have done some wrong get punished. Tyr was very fierce. I personally love Thier. He's, he's, you know, he promotes the worthy. <sighs> what can I say? <clears throat> well, whatever Egan's been up to, it seems like he might have found himself some religion <clears throat> uh, here in the last uh, few moments of his uh, time here. He's gathered a lot of different religious artifacts, it would seem. In fact, Although, you, you jump on the sofa. It's big, it's rich, it's, it's a nice place to jump on and sit, you know, just as, as you lay back a bit. And under your butt is a book titled Munsi Colts uh, by Thalesius of Tyr. Now, by itself, it's not that interesting. Actually, it's, it seems like in, in uh, a continuation of the, the theme from before with the bookcase. The only thing mostly remarkable about it is that it is probably the book he was in the middle of reading. It's open like in a way that was obviously set, the, like put down to keep a, tab- a page uh, up, and you don't understand the language. It's not common. It's not a common language. Oh, huh. uh, Dorelius, is this something you can read? Looks like this might have been what he, what Egan was looking at last time he was here. Can I read it? No. But, you know what? Try an intelligence check. I also have a comprehend language ritual. Oh, Ooh. then you can cast comprehend languages if you want to. And I do. Uh, casting, casting a ritual takes about 10 minutes and doesn't cost a spell slot. So <clears> that's, <throat> that's why it's amazing. Um, so why that's happening? Maybe, yes. Adrian, you can help me with these uh, drawers. Their mechanism seem to be stuck in some way. Stuck in a way that it is locked. All three drawers are locked. Yes, like I said, they are stuck in some way. Yes, in some way that is supposed to keep people from opening it. Yes, that is what I said. It yes. Need to be un- to be fixed. Yes. Yes, fixed. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'll hand the book uh, to the Dragonborn and then uh, come investigate the desk. They are obviously locked. Okay. Stuck. Uh, like I said, it is uh, stuck. Yes. 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 Uh, you'll see Adrian from about three different pockets pull uh, a multitude of thieves' tools uh, as he attempts to pop some of the locks. No problem at all. It's it's, it's pretty straightforward lock. Please roll a regular uh, sleight of hand check for me. Mm. Under your dexterity. It's amazing. Amazing your uh, mechanical skill in there. Uh, Fixing things. Yes, you autom- you you very easily fix it. The moment that you um, finish fixing the lock, it clicks in a way that wasn't supposed to click. You um, don't really open it as much as the door explodes outside and a burst of gas just spreads out, filling out most of the area around you. Uh, taking both the Count and Adrian together, Thank you for everyone that invested in the monsters and just created this trap. Both of you, please roll your constitution save. Thank you, uh, John. Uh, that's fine for you, uh, Rocco. You're far from them. It's really, it's only... Um, and and Dilarilus again just got... Uh, I was just thanking uh, him. Yes, yes? Please, I'm trying to cast a ritual here. Keep uh, quiet. And Adrian rolls a natural one. And the count rolls 16! Um, because Count. I am behind Adrian. Yes, he takes, he inhales most of the gas for you, and there wasn't a lot of gas, uh, gas beyond that. Um, Adrian, it is horrid. You are not sure what it is, but it is of artificial nature. Someone created this gas. It's not like the sack of a skunk beetle or whatever, <laughs> and you suffer one level of fatigue. Which is the worst, because it means you are rolling with a disadvantage on all of your ability checks. From the the coughing and the itching in the throat, it doesn't actually make you queasy as as more. It's like all of your your face and innards feel itchy and rough. Okay, uh, is there a window that I can stick my head out? 
Oh, yes, 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 button. yes, for totally. You just brush the window, open it very easily. The wind rushes ne- up next to you and stuff like that. Uri, something, Uri, yes, uh, Count, something fo- falls from the desk. The moment that Adrian turns and runs, a book hey, falls. What is, is it? Which book? Not, not the poetry again, is it? Um, uh, no, not no, uh, you, you, it's, it's hard to say if it was from the from among the other books or from the drawer that was just opened. Uh-huh. But it's a uh, it's a book. It's uh, something about curses. Well, if if it's about curses, it's obviously safe. I open it to see what's in it. <laughs> Various things about curses. I don't think you understand anything more than that. Basically, do you want to roll for Arcana? You can if you want to. No, why do we have a scholar with us? He's in the middle of casting a very complicated ritual. Uh, I will wait. Okay. Um, uh, and then you open, you open the window. I have some knowledge. I might try to understand it. And then you run toward... Fine, sure. Uh, you run toward the, the window to open it. Um, the moment you open it... Uh, again, of course, a, a gush of wind, like, you know, a gust of wind. So it um, um, washes over you. But you know, the, the, there's something kind of strange about the way that the um, the curtain well, that, that both of them will you know open wide and clasp so they won't just close back. Well, one of them just brushes you against the back of the neck, but it was just a moment ago. It was put to the side. Um, it's it's probably the wind. It probably just caused it. You know. To flare about or something. Um, Rocco, yeah, Adrian, said do you, you share that with us? Uh, I think initially I would just be concerned about trying to breathe some clean air. Uh, I would pretty much ignore <laughs> the, uh, the the curtain. I think. Okay, um, Rocco, you said you wanted to check things out. Yes. Yes. What do you want to check? I wanted to. Try and read the book, uh, understand the book. Do you have any knowledge of Arcana at all? I am. Um, I researched the divine for a, a lot uh, for a lot of years while in my hermitage. Not of, of course, course of planning course. anything about all kinds of things, but I have uh, some knowledge about divine things. Sure, but do you actually um, have a, a dot next to the uh, word no. Arcana? No. Okay. Um, that's fine, because what you've just read is kind of uh, obvious, even to you. You don't, although it's, it's, it talks about magical curses, all of it is complete bullshit. I mean, this is the worst kind of stupid, um, um, worthless um, details that you can find in a third-rate bookstore about shit of shit. I mean, nothing, really. None of these curses or of these solutions is worth anything at all. They're all fake. Not fake as much as superstitious. Um, Can I ask Diraculus to describe how he does his ritual? Okay. Well, I stand above the book. I raise my hand to the skies and I say... Oh, lo, lo. Oh, lo, lo. Oh, that's, lo, lo. That's for that, 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay. Sure, yeah, that works. That works. Um, <laughs> it is quite... As, as you do so, by the way, you, you come to understand that the language of the book is called um, uh, Thoras. Thoras is an ancient derivative... Well, the, the, the other side, not a derivative. Yes, it is. Of common. It's like old English to English. And it's it's hard to understand what is written down, but as you do the spell, of course, <laughs> things become clearer and clearer. And then you eventually uh, can read through it and understand that it talks about various ancient cults and their religious practices, complete with sketches. The, specifically, it talks about cults that worship demons, powerful spirits, things that were used around the moon sea, things that were people used to worship around the moon sea that predated modern um, civilization, like long before modern Flan. Has anything hmm. been practiced on this island? 
Um, is it's hard to say. What book was uh, uh, page was the book open on? Uh, number. It was opened on a number of a page. There was a page. It, it, it obviously doesn't matter, or else I would have known. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Well, that's a very interesting read, but I don't see how it's relevant to anything we do. Mm-hmm. Mm. Adrian, do you feel better now that you have breathed the fresh air then? Not at all. <laughs> oh. Yes, there is something. There is something. You, you, you. I mean, Adrian, you turn, you turn away from the window, and there's, you, you. There's something, almost like tapping you on the back of the neck. It can't be the curtain now. Uh, yeah, as I turn around to talk, and I, I kind of swipe at the back of my neck, and uh, I think between the the gas and the curtain and the the being locked in this room. Um, you might see uh, Adrian grab his amulet as he um, tries to maybe channel his divine energy and provide resistance to himself uh, mm. to this thing affecting um, his his throat and, and his neck and uh, you know and I'm not real sure what's going on count but I don't know if I like this room anymore. The door opens in a swing like. <sighs> Finally, someone. No, there's no one. There. There's no one there. Why do things keep opening up spontaneously in this castle, in this island? Wait, was did the door open inward or outward? Inward. And there's a window open here. No, that doesn't make any sense. Well, pressure-wise, no. Huh. I wonder. Fine, I'll close the door. Obviously, we can't have it. It's, it's obviously those peasants from before are following us. Ah, ye gods. Hate peasants. Hmm. So, we know that Mr. Sokol was re- reading about disgusting demon loving, worshipping habits. But He's also, probably the, down at the, the god of retribution. Uh, all those. Tear lovers, I'm guessing he was reading some, probably looking for some story about how Tear vanquished cultists or something. Um, I don't know, he seems like a trustworthy fellow. Hmm. Anything else of interest in the room? Nothing comes to mind. The door swings a bit. What? Why? I just closed it. Yeah, it opens just a little bit. I open it full swing. You what, sorry? I open it full swing to see who's hiding behind it. There's no one there. Ah! But, but um, further on down the corridor, one of the lanterns that is being kept flickers for a moment. Hmm. Okay, I give up. Are there ghosts here? Do you just say it to the air? Yeah. One of the books fall off the desk. <gasps> Dude. That was very yeah. obvious. Oh. I think there are ghosts here. I would like to use the, my divine sense in order to maybe feel them. The uh, moment you try to focus, the moment... How, how does it look how, when, when you focus your, your divine awareness? I hold... I take my uh, scroll, my divine scroll from... Outside of my, uh, from the inside of my shirt, I hold it in the air, and I just close my eyes and uh, wi- whisper a worship to my to the divine forces. It is if something washes over you, and you look around, and you you see the world exactly as you've seen it before, but in the back of the neck, you sort of feel the presence of someone else in the room. It is not malevolent. You would have felt if it was. And it is barely there. But it is of unearthly nature. Oh. 
Well, mm. do you discuss? Do, you... do I sense where? Like, it's not very focused. It's not very focused. It's not like there. It's somewhere around. Mm. Well, fellas, can someone? I I feel this presence. Can someone somehow? Uh, does someone know what it is? Uh, you have the most uh, knowledge, Dorolius. Um, well, uh, the, the, yes, Dorolius, what do you say? Well, to the presence in the room, if you can hear me, please drop a book. One of the books from behind you, Rocco, from the bookshelf, falls. It's one of the books on tier. Huh. Mm. Well played, Dorolius. Well played. Your intelligence leads us forward. Huh. We need to find Wait. some way to communicate by dropping books. <laughs> <laughs> so, dropping one book is yes, dropping two <laughs> books is no. Okay, sure, yes, why not? Do you That's understand it. that? A book falls from behind you, like, you know, you, you were looking at the bookcase, but the book from the desk from behind you falls, like, makes you jump on the spot, but... Ah. On... So it said yes. Now let's see if it can say no. Huh. Um, is it night time now? <laughs> Two books fall. Ha! <laughs> this is the strangest part of the communication I've ever been part of. Yes. <laughs> huh. Well, it's a progress. Okay. It's a progress. Um, well, can't you ask him something? Hmm. Exactly. Now, Can you pick up uh, a pen and write? What's happening here? The door opens. That wasn't part of the code. Yeah, I, I told you I wanted to leave this room. Perhaps oh. it's time to lead us away. This the being. Are you are you try, trying to lead us away? The book with the, um that was about tear flashes like a few pages like turn in an unseen wind. Mm-hmm. This whole idea of communicating with books is, is uh, very silly. I've only got my shelf to blame. Ah. Okay, then what what do we see in the new page? Oh, nothing specifically. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Uh, what does the book say? May I flip through it? It's um, a very general, a very old book about um, um, ways of uh, practices of, of worship of Tyr. Um, uh, you flip through it, and uh, you you I'm like you try to turn a page, but it turns like several pages for some reason. After you take one page, you almost feel the fingers of someone on your fingers for a moment. It's very chilly. Please roll wisdom save. Uh, where is it? What's your wisdom? Ten. What's your modifier? Zero. Uh, zero. Yeah. Is there not anything next right to it? To the next? To the right? Nope. Next to the right. Nothing? Then you okay. don't have any bonuses to your wisdom save. It's just plus zero. Hmm. A ten is enough. So it's chilly, but it's not uncomfortably chilly. Um, it ends on um, an altar for some reason. There's a drawing of an altar and um, how to dress a temple room correctly, according to some cults of Teal. Is Do we there have an altar in the room? In this room? No, nothing. Is there an altar in this island? I'm the waiting for a book to drop. The door rattles. I, I think, think it tells, it's trying think to it lead us yes, to an altar. Uh, is Mr. Sokol part of this? A book falls down. Mm. One book is yes. Start going. Uh. Uh, I have an idea. Since this is obviously a ghost of some kind trying to lead us away and communicate with us, 
I'm going to try and give it an actual form. So what I do is I let the natural glamour of my beauty reflect oh upon God. the room oh in God. purple in purple glow. What? And I'm trying for that purple glow to concentrate around this ghostly character. What the? What? what? Okay. What do you do? What is that? What was I, that? I, I'm casting fairy fire. Interesting. You try to catch an immaterial ghost by the glimpses of fairy fire. Yep. That's interesting. That's interesting. I like it. I like it. You know what? Sure. Yeah. Okay. You, sp- you cast the spell. The room gets... Well, it, you, 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 how do you cast a spell? You, you like strike a pose? Because you said it's I your... It's your... I strike pose, I hold on to my pendant, it glow with the red glow of glorious self-belief that I have in myself. And all the colors in the room fade into somewhat grayish you as redness spread around, turn purple, and seek something to engulf, another presence, something which I deem worthy. Like glitter flowing from you all around, all around. All around. Everyone is covered with glitter. Everyone around you. Covered magical with glitter. Magical glitter, yeah. But in one specific place, actually right at the door, it seems to slow to be slower than before. Like it doesn't flow down to the ground as, as quickly as in other places. Turning into a vaguely, very vaguely female shape that seemed to run outside. Turning right immediately and running down the corridor where the lantern flicked for a moment. Quickly, after the mischievous ghost. And we say. Um, all of you except for Andrian, who probably stops for a moment to cough a bit of his <laughs> lungs out. And oh. then continues running. Um, the thing seems to um, fade more and more because your glitter just, you know, flows down and, and in a trail behind it. Um, and it seems to sink and sink as if it, it, it tries its, its darnest just to keep it um, somewhere around itself and not just sprayed uh, all over. And like tiny pieces of glitter still continue on falling one by one after each other, going down, going into the eastern wind, wing right at the closed door where the glitter explodes against it. <clears throat> The, um, um, one of the, um, dudes, what was his name? Dude's name? Yes, mm-hmm. Darveg, the, um, the caretaker from before, uh, stands kind of next to the door when that happens and when you run in, um, shining some of the silverware and jumps as that happens, as all of you will come rushing into the, the room. Oh, my, my goodness. Is everything okay? What what just happened? Wait, Darveg is the uh, old peasants, female old peasants. peasants or young peasants? He old, old peasants. Okay. Old peasant. Yes, he's the old peasant. Yes, thank you. Well, we ignore him and continue to follow the mysterious fairy fiery ghost, which um, went where? Right into the doors, the locked doors into the abandoned east wing. Mm-hmm. Open this door, peasant. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, but... I, I mean, can't... gracious old peasant. I'm... <laughs> well, we have keys. I'm so... Oh, I apologize, but none, none of us have the keys. Um, Egan, uh, sir, Egan take the, took them to himself. Uh, um, he, he used to sometimes visit the East uh, Wing uh, for, for hours, even. I, I'm not really sure why. Uh, he, he kept the keys to himself. I'm not, I'm, uh, I apologize. Oh, for mistress' sake, he must be locked inside, bleeding this very moment. Oh, oh my, him. do you think so? I have never been more certain or less certain in anything else in my life. Oh my god, please roll persuasion on me. All deception. Well, of this, I'm not sure what do you actually feel about this. Do you think it but, actually happens? Well, of course, <laughs> this is either his ghost trying to let us into his body, or... A benevolent ghost tried to lead us to say that Sir Suckle fell into the well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, well, just, just, a, just a moment. So, just a second. And he rushes out of the room and 
opens a door to the outside, you can hear the rain, and then runs back inside mm-hmm. holding a crowbar all wet and his feet are like, you know, muddy all over the very nice floor, just handing you the crowbar. Please, please, heal, just, uh, uh, if he's in there, you must release him. Uh, uh, I take the crowbar and carriagefully give it to Rocco. <laughs> I take the crowbar. I take the crowbar from the pretty stupid-looking count, and I'm t- and I one person and I try to uh, open the force open the locked door. Please roll for strength. Can anyone help him with this? Uh, no, Adrian will take a few steps down the hallway away from this locked door. Okay. So well, fortunately, my uh, dragon heritage has given me some strength, even though I don't walk out because I'm in the library all the time. So I'll help him. So the both of you... Okay, excellent. Some leverage, some um, pure strength. Um, Rocco, you roll with an advantage because someone is helping you. When you roll with an advantage, you roll two dice and pick the higher one, which is amazing. And do I use my strength modifier? Yes, you do. At, um, actually, oh, I... athletics, even if you have it. I have, and it's even better. Amazing. Ooh. So it's 2d20 plus 5. Sure thing. Right. Nice. Excellent. I okay. Got a 16. No, it's not, it's not, you don't actually roll 2d20 plus 5 because it adds them together. But yes, we look at each plus one. Plus five. Exactly. We look at each of them by itself. If it was just one, you would have failed. Thanks to um, Derelius, probably not that amazing strength, you both managed to throw open the door and a gush of not stale wind at all. Actually, the air seems totally fine. Not even dusty all that much. Kind of surprising, considering it's supposed to be a closed-off section of the main hall. And... It is, however, kind of dark inside there. It seems to be mostly a big hall, but there are obviously obvious signs of a lot of footsteps in the dust toward oh. a specific side, um, like the, the, the further side of the hall where there's an open door. We have a moment to lose. Rocco, lead on. Let's go. We enter. I enter the room. It, it seems like a pretty uh, rundown. Again, everything is covered with um, sheets, white sheets, and some crowwebs. And no one was actually here except for all of the footsteps on the floor, and uh, some pretty big bookshelves and desks and stuff like that against. Well, most of the walls around, it seems like they keep a lot of the furniture here when they're when it's not in use in some other rooms. But there's no exit from this room. Isn't it supposed to be a whole wing? Um, yes. The, outside, the hall outside leads to some other rooms. Hmm. Uh, this is uh, very mysterious. I suggest we... Sp- Spread across the room and look around very methodically. One of the um, chairs covered with a sheet. The sheet seems to like fluff a bit. <gasps> then we approach and we immediately uncover the chair. There's a chair. I promptly sit on it. It is sitable. You are sitting down. Okay, that did not help much. I no, suggest no. again to search the room. Uh, shall we investigate? Shall we roll investigate for wa- searching want, the room? Do you want to roll for investigate then? Yes, I want to <laughs> search the room. Um, uh, excellent. Since everyone... Well, actually, I'm not sure. What do you guys do? Do you want to help him? I look for an uh, alter-shaped um, form. Okay, excellent. I look first thing on the books and the scrolls. There are so no there are books, books or schools, and... only book shelves. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Then I help him with the general investigation. Okay, sure, of course. Um, Adrian, and the, the the itching seems to subside a bit. Can you do anything to help with it? <clears throat> uh, I do have the resistance cantrip. 
um, yeah. that gives me advantage on, or it gives me an additional d4 to any saves, um, but nothing stronger than that. I can help, well, let's say like that. Do you have anything on you, you probably do, that is, you know, kind of like um, a hair of the dog that bit you? Like something kind of poisonous and uh, you sh probably shouldn't eat it? Because I would say, how about you eat that? Poison yourself a bit, but with resistance, you might be able to save against it. And by that way, very, very logical way, kill the, um, um, the, the poison, whatever it is, that is already within you. Uh, I don't have any alcohol or the sorts, just some rations and a pet mouse, though I doubt I would eat him. <gasps> Well, there are cockroaches all around. I can give him something for my herbalism kit. Oh. Something that is very dangerous and would probably kill you? Uh, of course I have something like that somewhere. Let me look. Um, I have a bottle of ink. It's, it's, uh, very, it's <laughs> not healthy for you. No, I don't think, I don't think there's a resistance against ink. Um, count. Please roll investigation with an advantage. Oh, with an advantage. I like advantage. Yes. Excellent. You roll a 9 and a 12. We look at the 12. The 12 is more than enough. As you guys um, start to um, um, search around, it becomes pretty obvious that some furniture against the far wall has been moved back and forth, back and forth, and stirred a lot of the dust around it. Pushing it is kind of easy and mm. the moment you do a, again a gust of wind comes from inside with a very distinct smell of incense rich oh. rich incense um it is quite obviously a shrine it's a small room the the, the walls looked look um as if a totally different kind of construction. Um, the Relius, it, it is a, a lot more like the old keep than the new keep. Mm. And the shrine is, um, it, it takes up most, I mean, the altar takes up most of the shrine. There's a beautiful gray statue of a one-handed blind man standing above it with a small stone altar um, in which they supposed to, well, of, uh, probably there was some incense um, spread all over it. There was only ashes now. Um, there's also a book. Do, do any, anyone recognize uh, this statue? Which date is this? Yes. yes, I can tell you, Rocco, that this is Tyr. Hmm. Dirolius, why don't you check the book again as our scholar? I check the book again. It really is a pretty swell book. I mean, it has like a purple um, covering with this, you know, this this um, fine leather kind of. You you want you want to put your head, I mean, against it. It's so soft. It's pretty thick, and it is obviously the journal of. Um, Egan Sokol. <gasps> and it's very obvious because he, he talks about his um, um, his life in Sokol Keep, uh, how he spent his um, um, days here at first when he came when he came from um, the city, how he saw it as an opportunity because of the treasure, how uh, various other things here and there, and it gets stranger and stranger as you go along. You just flip through it, but things start to get a bit eh, because like after a few pages he starts to write on the side notes and then he starts to write but not exactly backwards but like you know a mirror style to maybe keep some things it's kind of weird it seems that egan started to search the manor in search of the fable treasure <coughs> he didn't realize he will find a shrine to tear here when he did he realized there's something beyond. He started to talk about the presence, which you think is probably the thing that you call the ghost. Um, he didn't take it actually seriously. He thought that he found what was there his to find. 
until Sergeant Grimm, a lovely name, one of the Black Fists, um, thought, you know what, we should go, there is, I'm, I'm sure there is a treasure, we will find a treasure, this shrine is only the start. That, this Grimm um, made him um, um, take this whole thing a lot more serious, and he searched uh, b- b- like twice as hard and discovered something strange, probably. That's the moment that things start to become very strange. And here is the last page of the journal. Now, what I show to you now, and I hope you all see, and I hope that Aviv Manoach is showing you as well, Aviv, is um, actually a way... Um, then I'm showing it to you now twice as hard as I've shown you before. Nice. Um, this is, a, picture it in a horrible handwriting that you can barely read, but quite obviously by a madman. Hmm. I don't see the last page. Oh, I do see the last page. Ooh. Oh, yes, you should all see it now. If anyone don't see it, you can click the journal tab at the upper right part of the screen where you can see the last page of the journal. Uh, Lucas, would you care to read what we see inside the journal? Uh, yeah. Uh, so Adrian will take the journal and, and read it aloud. Uh, let's see. Looks like Egan's notes here, uh, what we do know. It's under the West Tower. Uh, weird symbol surrounded by tentacles uh, involved with a cult in the region of Flan. Followers of Tyr destroyed it, but they never found the treasure. Uh, the Book of Moonseed Cults by Thalios of Tyr might contain more. Uh, he'll look up and say, didn't we find that book in the study? Yep, because that, that was the one. Durelius, did, you take the, Durelius, did you take the book with you? Of course I did. Uh, the mm-hmm. journal continues here. Uh, need to know password? No. Uh, potential curses? Well, we found a couple of those already. Uh, mm-hmm. True nature of the <laughs> cult? There's a question mark. Uh, there's a note here in the uh, on the side. Uh, Sergeant Grimm thinks it's unimportant. Any evil's long gone. Gold is gone. Egan disagrees. Uh, gold is gold, gold, not gold is is gone. Oh. There's one thing I pay attention to is gold. It's gold. He <laughs> sure. kind of looks at the count reading over his shoulder. Uh, yes. <laughs> thanks, count. I'm not much for the written word. <laughs> uh, it looks like it goes through some other notes on something he found in one of the other books. Uh, hands it to Dorelios. Uh, this might make more sense to you. Which and one? It finish- and it finishes with the sentence, yes, got it. Now wait for Grimm. Digging without soldiers might be dangerous. That is the one final sentence at the end of the journal. Hmm. Hmm. Well, if it's under the West Tower, uh, which one is the West Tower, though? Not this uh, one, the other one. Hmm. Hmm. You are in the east wing, there's the west wing. Looks like Mr. Colos got more than he bargained for. And maybe something he did that caused the lighthouse to malfunction. Hmm. The moment you say that, the, statue, the, the incense on top of the altar blows for a moment, like as if, as if a wind just poofed it. Huh. Perhaps you should perform well, the ritual of tear. Um, I can tell. I, I can tell you, Rocco. This location is. You can feel it. This location has nothing sacred about it anymore. It, it's just a room. It's a shrine for a dead god that hasn't been taken care of for a long time. I mean, it. It looks as if. Someone, probably Egan, came here a lot and placed here a lot of books and took care of the place. But spiritually, it's as dead as the next room. There's nothing here. 
mm-hmm. will find the, if some if nothing here is a uh, sacred and uh, have uh, any spiritual power and uh, Sokol said he was looking some somewhere around the west tower maybe we should go there indeed a great conclusion the Orius let us advance that wasn't the Orius that was Rocco ah stop stop Oh. Moving around me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. See, it's enough uh, to have a disembodied ghost going around. Let us, let's all of us try and stay where we are where, when we are there. Yeah, definitely. Uh, d- did we manage to work something around uh, Adrian f- itching? Ah, Adrian's itching? Um, sure, what? Uh, I don't remember if we did or not. <laughs> Let's say that yes, but what? Uh, I gave him some of the more poisonous herbs from my herbalism kit uh, to try and eat, so we can uh, try to save himself. So just to be clear, Adrian, do you really go for it? Do you try to eat some poison to destroy some poison? Um, if Roko handed it to me and told me it would help, I would be inclined to believe him. No, I said it uh, might help. Because <laughs> I wouldn't know any better, um, but uh, I would definitely pray to. Uh, oh no, you you will have your resistance. Yes, oh, the oh, dark, oh the dark for, sure. for sure, for um, sure. Okay, excellent. Please roll um, um, Constitution save and add your one d four from your resistance. Wait, before you do. I just want to tell you, Adrian, I believe in you and I believe that you can overcome any poison, any bad feeling, any smugness in your throat, any hardship in your way, everything ever. Because I believe in you and if I believe in you, that's enough. That's enough to, to give you another 1d6. Uh, yeah, that's an yes, inspiration that's, die. Yes, that's an inspiration die. Yes, that's enough for another 1d6. <laughs> okay. Uh Kind of motivated by uh, the count, Adrian will uh, eat the herbs, take a drink from his water skin, and all together. Wow, that's not a lot at all. That's 12. Wow, that's uh, nice. Uh, Adrian starts to choke on the um, piece of, uh, what was it, I think? A worm that you gave him. I think you gave him... Basically a dead worm, like a crispy dead. And it looks like, you know, like herb or something. But it was a worm. Um, you start to choke on it for a few moments until something really like almost slaps you on the back of, of your uh, neck. And you feel a lot better. Was it actually the poison or was it quite obviously the touch of a ghost on your back? You will never know. Probably. Um, you, you start to head out, still probably coughing toward the other tower. Um, rifling through the, um, the book, Drelius, I can tell you, you notice specifically something about prayer signals, ancient, until you see something saying, the great old one from the deaths. Hmm. That sounds lovely. You, as the others approach the eastern, the um, western wing and <clears throat> open the doors, you start to wonder, what is it exactly that Egan and his, um, and the guards led by Grimm actually discovered beneath Sokol Keep? And... Uh, should it be something that you rediscover yourself? Heading out and getting ready to descend into the depths. We will have to stop now. And half an hour was robbed from us, unfortunately, at the start of this stream. And so we'll have to stop. No, I'm sorry, because there was another adventure starting in like 10 minutes. Oh, no. Thank you very much, Jonathan and Ophir and Lucas, for joining us. And thank you for, you know, Pushing on with us through the technical, uh, Hooray. yay, Hooray. through the technical problems at the start, and I'm sorry that we didn't get to get, 
to give you some actual monsters to fight. There are like a ton of ghouls on, down <laughs> under. And, a ton, and you know, like waves upon waves of ghouls just waiting. And... To munch us. Yes. And they are stronger than before. And I would like to thank everyone that um, donated during the last hour. We got, I think, $75 more or less during the past hour which is amazing excellent excellent and uh and that's it any last words before we stop for a moment and continue in about five ten minutes very good thanks for having me gladly yeah. thanks for the opportunity I, I you're never, awesome guys it was the first no. time for me to speak with falling books with so so <laughs> for it's me an as well for it's me an as well Yes. Um, if you guys want to, you guys at home, want to check this adventure out, it's called uh, Secrets of Sokol Keep. And there are more secrets to discover, obviously. This was actually part one. Um, check it out. It's pretty awesome. From uh, dmsguild.com. That's it. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.